psychological and mental process of leaving a cult. A big part of it begins with first realizing and acknowledging and understanding that you are in a cult. Once you know that, then it really helps to begin from there. Even though I ended up leaving the uh, Kingston Polygamist group when I was 18, the process began much earlier than that. There was a lot that I had to think about and it was a big decision to make to decide to end up leaving the religious group that I grew up in and lived in it my entire life up to being 18 years old. And it was really all that I knew at the time. And so it was, to me, it was mind blowing and quite frankly, crazy for me to even consider and think about leaving that organization because it was all that I knew. So I want to talk about that a little bit because so many people, they think it's just a matter of like, just run, just go, stop, <laughs> stop letting people control you. And so many people talk about it as if it's the easiest thing in the world. Because from an outside perspective, looking in, joining a group like the Kingston Polygamist Group is the last thing anyone would do. And it's very clear out here that that's not something that someone would want to be a part of. And it's not something someone would consciously choose out of all the other choices that they have out here. But when you're born and raised into it, in it, you see things quite a bit differently. So I would say the first step to even begin your mental process of figuring out, um, like starting to leave the cult, is to figure out what truly matters to you. Not only the things that you have a passion for and that bring meaning to your life, but also the people who around you mean the most to you. What things do you truly care about? Because I think when you define these, it can help you to better understand what you want out of life and help you to set up the goals and the, the steps that you need to accomplish that in your life. I think the biggest piece of advice that I can give to someone who is looking into leaving the cult that they are in or just a bad environment that they are in is to not give away your intentions. I know for me, it was like top secret. One of the biggest things I knew I had to keep was my true opinions about wanting to leave or to stay in um, the group. Because the moment people know or even think that you're considering or, or questioning or, or have the thoughts to leave, then they now have a reason to try to convince you to stay, to talk to you, to try and um, just do whatever they can to convince you that it is right and that you need to stay there. And... If you can keep that to yourself, the people, they don't know what to ask or what to do if they don't have any reason to consider it. If you don't give them a reason to think that you're leaving, then they won't know that to try to keep you there. They'll just assume that you're already planning to stay there. And for me, this is where the mental part is still to this day kind of like making me question a lot of things because... I knew that I wanted to leave. At least I was very confident that I wanted to leave, but I was still in it for a good, for a long time, many months, even after I consciously made the decision that I wanted to get out and that I wanted to leave, I was still there for quite a while. And a part of it was me kind of like putting on a show or acting, convincing the people around me that everything was okay, that um, I loved being a part of the church and that I would never leave. And it would have been silly of me to basically tell them that I was going to leave before I had everything ready to leave. Or even for me, I didn't tell anyone all the way up until I actually left. That way, no one had a reason to try to stop me. And I mean, it's not very realistic to think that they can convince outsiders to come in. But when someone is a young child and they have been working on that child their entire growing up, that is their best chance at getting a dedicated, hardworking, committed member of the group. And I feel like that's what they were doing with me. Let me tell you, I was, I was pretty convinced, that's for sure. And it's different for everybody. Some people leave in the spur of the moment. Some people plan and prepare long before. 
But the important part is that you make the decision, that you find out what matters most to you, and that you chase after your passion. And if you have that desire, you will find a way. Amanda, man, she literally, when Amanda, my sister, left, she went door to door, knocking on people's doors, complete strangers' doors, just asking them for help, putting trust in them to be able to help her out. And she took it from there and figured it out and found a way to leave to get the things that she needed to and just make it work out, man. You can do it. And you got to be careful with letting them know that you're trying to leave because it's like they will convince you that you are the crazy person. All it takes for a crazy person to convince a normal person that they are crazy is to put that person around enough crazy people. And then it will look like you're the crazy one. It will. When leaving a cult, you have to think about so much more than what you've ever processed before because all the way up until that point you've been at least uh, conditioned in a certain way to only think about what is in that environment like believe me there are so many people within the cult that when they leave their front door of their house or their apartment or wherever they live they have that pathway to church memorized and down they know all of the places to the order businesses to go to john's marketplace to get their groceries to get the things that they need to go to the order bank to go to all of the things within their cult or their you know their organization and they make it in a way that it's like that is what you're conditioned to do and what you're conditioned to know that even processing and thinking about anything else can be scary can truly terrify so many people that are grown up in one specific way most important part is to get out of there to make sure and leave and for some people it's going to have to be in the spur of the moment planning is only a <laughs> is only an option given to those that have that luxury to be able to plan and prepare for it and to have thought it out but even if you leave in the spur of the moment you need to start looking at what is next setting goals prioritizing your time and what you want to accomplish is going to make your leaving so much more successful and give you so much more reason to not only get out but to stay out as well but if you are one of the people that is just beginning their journey and just starting starting it out i would very strongly recommend to not let people know your intentions just just don't be stupid okay i kept it all the way up until the day that i left I was put on such a good act, you guys. I let them know that I loved the order. I wanted to do everything that I could to be a good order member and not to give away any hints or ideas or thoughts that I would be leaving at all. Because if they don't know that you are even thinking about leaving, then they don't know to try and convince you to stay. They're not going to take it as seriously or to spend more time with you or try super hard because they don't realize what is going on inside of your head and they won't know unless you tell them. So just don't tell them, okay? <laughs> and even for me, I was literally, I, I was saving away money underneath my bed to prepare for when I was going to leave. But I was in the mindset that if anyone found out about that, man, I was screwed. <laughs> and that's how convincing you have to be. You gotta convince yourself a little bit. <laughs> no, sorry, that's a little bit too far. But I'm serious. If they don't know that you're trying to leave, then they won't try extra hard. They won't know that they, like, what's going on, basically. You need to find out what you want and why you want that. Spend this life and this time on figuring out what you want to be and how to become that. So many people get so focused on what do they want me to be? How do they want me to act? How do I fit in with all of them? When it's like, no, you should figure out why you make the decisions that you're making and why you even want to make those decisions. And that's the best way for you to improve them and to live life more intentionally, live with a purpose and strive and, and go towards your passion, passion and your dreams so that when you come at the end of your life, you can say, you put in your best effort. You sent it, man. You went and talked to all those girls. You flipped and tried out all those jobs. You went skydiving. You made the most of it. Because this world allows you to do that. This world has so much opportunity and potential. 
so much that you can do and enjoy. Don't waste it. Don't get to the end of your life and blame your dad for convincing you of a certain way of life or blame your mom for lying about how she felt. Don't do things that will make you feel like you can blame others for the place that you're at in your life. It's not worth it. They're going to be dead. You're not going to be able to blame them. The only person that you'll confront at the end of your life is you. And you'll need to tell yourself why you made the decisions that you made. So make sure you have a good reason. I know it's so easy to blame your parents when you're there. If you find yourself in a crappy situation, I, I can only imagine. If I spent 40, 50 years in the cult, had dozens of kids, and just felt so trapped and like I'm not going anywhere with my life. I'd be like, what the heck, Dad? <laughs> Mom, why didn't you warn me? What, what is this? This is crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't handle this. I didn't. Did I really decide this? Did you guys really tell me that this was the best? I know. It looks easy to blame them. And I'm sure if all of you... I mean, they, they did teach you that from, from birth. They worked so hard at convincing you on that. And I don't know why. I, I don't think they even fully know why. But they did. And what? What if they just look at their parents and say, well, my parents taught me the same way. Like, I mean, it's their fault. <laughs> like, no, don't, don't get stuck in the blame game, you guys. Make sure that whatever you are deciding to do, it's truly because of you are deciding it. Don't let it be that you're being convinced by other people. Don't let your parents be just, <clears throat> just in control of your whole life and everything that you do. Make your own decision. Decide for yourself. That way, when you get to the end of your life, you can look back and say, I chose this. This is truly what I wanted and I care about it. And I worked hard for this. This is my life. Not my dad's life. Not my mom's life. Not my grandpa's life. It's mine. <laughs> I'm gonna make the freaking most of it, okay? I'm gonna love it and treat it like it's the only life that I have. And at the end of my life, I'll be able to look back and say that it was awesome, that I loved it. And I may have made some mistakes, but I learned from them. And I grew from them and I continued on and I made the most of it. Trust me, it's gonna be pretty great. I believe in you. I've seen so much good and so many great things come out in this life, in this world, throughout this short life that I've lived so far. I'm freaking 24. I'm still super young, but I spent 18 of those years in the cult. So that's only six years of experience that I've had on the outside. And I wouldn't change it for the world, you guys. It's been some of the coolest experiences that I've ever had. It's been completely life-changing. It's opened my eyes to so much. I've learned so much. It's been awesome. I love it. I freaking love it. Anyways, if there's one last thing I want to leave you with that, it's that. It's to make the most of it. To don't play the blame game of your life. Treat it like it's your last one. Your only one and make it count. Thanks guys. Thanks for watching. We